Jason Waddell joins us on the programme. Morning, Jason. You must be buzzing uh, for this dual Group 1 day. Yeah, morning, Jason, the team. Yeah, I'm absolutely fizzing. Um, super pumped about today. It's a fantastic day's racing. It's probably one of my favourite days of the year. And, uh, you know, we've got some quality horse fleece to sit on today. And, uh, yeah, I'm more than excited about getting back on our dross, and that's for sure. How quality is he? You rode him two starts ago to a pretty soft win at Tiaroha, and then uh, the ride was picked up by Michael McNabb, and he carried that light weight to win at Ellerslie. How exciting is the Drossen to you? Oh, yeah, he's hugely exciting. Um, he's pretty untapped. You know, he's four from four in New Zealand, and he's already won, uh, listed in a group of three out of his four starts. He, he don't get much better than that. Um, I know he, he failed in Australia, but he had some issues there, and... Uh, you know, he's a group one winner in the making. Um, the 1400 is going to be a, a decent test for him. I, um, I think he's a real speed horse. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll try to rectify that. We're giving him as soft a run as we can during the, during, during the race. And um, he, he'll be there when the hooks are cracking, no doubt about that. You've had the advantage of sitting on some pretty special sprinters this season. Julius, who's now retired, Melody Bell in work, and also uh, in the Telegraph where she didn't race up to expectation. We're seeing a Dross and Bolton at Ellerslie. How does he compare to those two that you've sat on? Uh, look, he's, uh, he's a different horse physically to, to Melody Bell. Um, he's, he's a lot stronger. He's probably a little bit more settled than she is, but trying to compare sprinters is uh, it's hard. You know, we've seen what Moss A did to them in the Concord one year. We've seen what Julius has done. Um, you know, I've won the VCB sprint twice on uh, on horse with Tavistock and Christoph, so I, I don't really like trying to compare them more. I'm just fortunate enough to the fact that I get to ride so many good sprinters. Um, I don't ride a lot of stayers because of, of more handicap races, but um, you know, I'm really fortunate to ride uh, a lot of good sprinters, and uh, uh, Josh is certainly in, uh, in the top quartet of them. Would you say that the tactics are actually sort of pretty set for him, that you, you need to be rolling forward? Yeah, he's just a jump and go forward horse. It's a style that we, we won't take from him. It's a style that he likes to race in and uh, it's a style that we adopt today. Um, personally, I would have rather have not seen Ego Fiscola in the field running along the section that he may run. It may just make it a little bit of a harder 1,400 than I would have liked. I would have probably preferred to lead at my own tempo, but, um, you know, Valachi, you know, he's still a stallion, so he deserves the space being a group one winner in the field. But, yeah, I would have probably preferred over the 1,400 to have led on him under my own steam and, tried to make it a soft 1,400 metres for him because, uh, yeah, that is his, his like, pattern is to go forward. How do you assess a horse like Melody Bell, given what happened to her last start? You've also got Volpe Veloce in the race and High Flyer. No, nah, High Flyer is a horse that he's a little bit turning and out for me. Um, you know, I'm not a massive fan of him. Uh, Melody Bell, um, um, you know, I love her a bit. You know, unfortunately, she... We, I can't say we did a gel on the telegraph. She just had an off day, and unfortunately, I was delighted in that on that, on that occasion. But uh, you know, Troy takes over, so uh, you know, she's going to get every possible chance. Um, well, paper like she, she's a super mare. You know, we love her to bits as well. You know, she's just honest as the day is long, and she takes the line hard. I think between those three, the Quinella is going to be a come out of those three, and they could fill the trifecta as well. OK, good thoughts there, interesting thoughts. Jason Waddell is with us on the line speaking about his rides today. We move on to the Herbie Dyke Stakes with Madison County coming out, Lizzie Lamore coming out yesterday. Um, in pure numbers, uh, that helps you with the wind spell and also chances uh, increase with uh, those runners having or uh, well, being highly regarded uh, by the market. What sort of wind spell will you expect to see today, Jason? Well, he's won two races, in, well, two races in New Zealand now, two of them have come up at Waikato. Um, he's a group two winner over the course and the distance, so he loves the track, and we all know with Sirapa that that's a big factor when you come to race there. Um, he's in great form coming off a third in the group one second his last start. Weight for eight doesn't bother him, and he's a uh, three-time group one place at weight for eight. The only thing that's a little bit tricky is his barrier draw. It comes into barrier eight. Um, I'm not too sure what sort of tactics we will adopt from there, whether we follow St. Amelia on across or we go back a bit further to get cover. I'll sort of plan that a little bit more on how the track's racing. But, um, you know, really excited. I've, I've had a lot of eyes on him now. And, uh, you know, you know, you'll see a very happy Jason and John Bernard here from across the line first today, that's for sure. 
Over the 2,000 metres, is he the type of horse that you might be able to use a couple of times to take a spot or, or even um, move sort of early if the tempo doesn't suit? Mm, I'm not sure. I don't believe so. I think he's a horse. You'll find that most of his wins have come on two things, good tracks and good barriers. He likes the rail um, and he needs a soft one. He, he, he's not a horse that can really cover ground. He's not quite big and strong enough to do that. Um, although the field has come down in numbers, I, I may be able to get around him at some stage, but he's not a horse I'll be making a fetch in 700 metre run on, that's for sure. OK, moving on to the Warren Storm Life Brokers, Waikato Guineas. Now, speaking of draws, you've lobbed on here with Crown Prosecutor. How helpful will that be? Yeah, very helpful. He's an on-speed horse. Uh, he can lead, he can trail. He'll be in the first four. So barrier one, uh, it's pretty ideal for them, although I do have to hold my spot and not get mother back on the rail. It's the last one I'd like to see is probably three back defence on him. Um, he's a little bit difficult. He has some pre race antics that uh, aren't... It's not the best well behaved, but uh, he was much better at Wellington last start, although he probably raced a little bit below expectations. His work since then has been first class, and I think the 2,000 metres is a real plus. How do you assess the pace in the race? We're seeing him just get a bit out sprinted in the Levin Classic by Madison County and others. How, how do you assess the, the, the tempo in the race overall? Yeah, I think there's solid pace in that land car. We always go forward, but if they're going to go slow, don't worry, I'll be in front and I'll be leading. And... Uh, We'll roll along with some nice sectionals because I know he, he is quite a dour stayer, I think. So, uh, you know, I don't think the race is going to be one slow. And if it is, I'll be trying to get out from where I am and make sure it's sustained. Ted. Another inside draw for you in the race prior to that, the Cambridge Stud Sir Tristram Phillies Classic. You're on Nerve, not Verve. Now, she's a maiden, but she doesn't look out of place in a race like this. Is, is that what you're thinking? She's a very, very nice filly. Uh, she's quite... I think she's quite dowry to see in her action. She's got a lovely carriage. Um, although she's still feeling into the racing game, she, she does have good ability. And um, from barrier one, I, I don't think that's a massive advantage or disadvantage. She'll be back three to four back on the rails. I'll be trying to get her to relax. She can not always do things a touch early. So we'll be trying to put her to sleep for as long as we can. And uh, we'll bring her out and she can sustain a, a, a 600 metre sprint. And, and I really reckon she's one for odds today. There she is uh, finishing on behind Sword and Stone, which might well prove to be a good reference for uh, Sword and Stone, uh, the race following the Cambridge Stud Sir Tristram Phillies Classic. And aboard again, demonetisation. Now, what are you expecting from him? He, mu he must have uh, been pleasing uh, seeing him win last time. Yeah, 100%. It was great to see him back in the winner's circle last time. Um, he's two stone bottom now, and I, I believe. He's reacted really well to that. He showed a good tenacity to get his head down on the line and beat Pop Star Princess last start. Um, the 61 and a half is a bit of an impost, although he carried 59 and a half last start. The only real query is if the track gets really firm today. You know, we all know he likes to get his toe in a little bit, so that's sort of my only query, although the mile helps a lot. And, uh, you know, Nigel Tiley, you know, he's a fantastic trainer and he'll have him in tip top order. OK, Jason, we're going to put it on you. Um, of the horses that you will be riding today, who do you think is the most likely to pass the post first? Um, look, on paper, the monetisation probably looks my best ride to see if I manage to win one of those two big ones on, on those two colts. And 